All right, bro, it's T and I'm back, man, with another video. And in this video, I want to, I always wanted to do a video again on this guy, dude. His name is Jeff Nippert, bro. He just came out with a nice little cozy little video on, uh, what is it? The muscle IQ test. Are you smarter than average about fitness? This, this dude brings out every study in the book to get hypertrophy. He's got you so confused that you don't even know which hypertrophy you're doing out there anymore, which is mechanical hypertrophy is this fucking loading or unloading is this myofibular sarcoplasmic hypertrophy which hypertrophy is this what fucking hypertrophy is this i know i know i know it's fatigue to muscle hypertrophy it's it's anabolic hypertrophy overeating hypertrophy and <laughs> get bigger which one have you chosen man which one is harder which one sticks around which one goes away well all the ones that he does are the ones that all disappear get it and so there's a program for that out there for every type of this is see this is where you would never you all you dummies out there never understood all you fucking shitheads you never understood your your these minions on this channel 2.83 million fucking retarded people out there bro that fucking are following this guy this manlet bro get it he's got you manlet syndrome lifting a heavy weight all the time and he's taking steroids i did a video on it he admitted it remember that video way back he he did like he was doing this competition and i ordered the steroids but i didn't take it i needed to win the show so i needed to cheat because you know i have to cheat because i don't know how to build a muscle there's all these studies i've been doing the hypertrophy and all that but i can't build a muscle bro i can only fake it he's a faker bro like the last time let's watch his Something video with 113,000 people on a muscle and fitness iq garbage test. fucking channel garbage TV, bro. questions about pure garbage muscle, gaining strength and who gives a shit about any of that in this video we're going to be breaking down how well garbage. my audience did and what the correct answers were who For cares example, we're wasting time that over 98 percent of people correctly selected a caloric deficit what? the most important factor for losing fat I was a bit surprised that only 49% of people stupid, selected bro. the anterior or front delts as the least active muscle on a cable row. And only 16% of people got the reefy question. He's small, bro. Look at him. He's small. But he's going to show you what he looks kind of big. A manlet. A big manlet. You ever seen a big manlet? Right? Or a big man? Over 87,000 You like big manlets or big men? Which I think is pretty solid. You know the difference between a big man and a, and a big manlet? <laughs> You're still a manlet. <laughs> this test was pretty hard. Only I fucking love this battle TV, bro. So this is fucking funny to watch this shit. It's hilarious. Score. Reviewing and all this, this garbage. Like. So ah, much this is the research. This is the results. Perfectly. This is the results of the bell curve that goes up and it goes down. And this is perfectly how it's supposed to match in the world. Really? What if it goes fucking diagonally or some shit or horizontally or vertically? What the fuck? If it goes like completely straight or up, bro? Then what the fuck happens then, eh? Oh, we have a problem. Houston, we have a problem, bro. He fabricated this. He created that, bro. He made this up. You understand me? This guy fabricates everything. His fake fucking channel. It's so garbage, bro. It's full of fucking dumbasses. Two point fucking eight three million dumb fucking people, bro. Watch fucking stupid shit. Has anyone ever gotten results? I guarantee you not one minion on this channel has ever gotten any results. You want to know why? They're never going to look like this manlet because look at him. He's got nice caps because he's on steroids, bro. Get it? I can make that I can make that assumption because he had a video showing that he ordered steroids. So he is on steroids, bro. He takes steroids. He's what you all call a fake natty. But you could be fake natty doing these weird hypertrophies because they're faking it. To get water and muscles, creatine is a fake natty, turkestron. Even sarcoplasmic could be considered fake natty because it's, it's, it's water muscles. <laughs> it's not real, but it's fluidic muscles, bro. <laughs> it's just for the cosmetic look of being big. And if you'd like to go ahead and take the test for yourself, you can still do so over at jeffnipper.com. I always like to show himself off. Muscle IQ. He had to take so it. He had to take steroids. Easy level. Because his channel would have died, bro. Get it? He has to appeal to a certain crowd. These dumb people that are easily brainwashed. You end yeah. up, man. It's just as bad as watching this, uh, what is it, Jeremy Ether's channel, exercise channel, bro. It's just fucking garbage. Oh, first look, at, look at him. So he goes in, he, the lighting is important. Remember, the lighting is very important to show off, to show yourself off, make yourself look bigger than you are. Look at him. He look, it's a mellow manlet, bro. It's a manlet. dynamic manlet. says that even if your diet is super high in carbohydrate or super skewed. <sighs> manlet, fucking manlet posing, bro. Toward one time of day. Watch another. out, manlet posing. Manlet posing. 
steroids, bro, pure steroids, and probably some creatine, some other garbage in there he mixed in there probably. Who the fuck knows? Some <laughs> modulators. Will still lose fat as long as you're in a net caloric deficit over time, making it the most important. You can lose some fat over time. As long as you're in a net caloric deficit, well then how are you keeping this puffy look? How did you get lean but yet you look puffy? You look puffed out. You look sarcoplasmic. -y. It's an energy source. You're carrying a lot of it. And when you diet, could you imagine if you, it, like these natural people, you look like this guy from, uh, what is it, Nick Strength and Power, bro. He looks, um, hold on. Nick Strength and Power, he looks, he got super skinny. He went to a show, bro. He looked like nothing. He looked like a fucking anorexic. <laughs> because you have to get lean first and then build your body, get it? And you'll stay lean the whole time. And then that sarcoplasmic, the, the part where you're trying to build myofibular is doing like what I do. I do myofibular hypertrophy and sarcoplasmic to build these muscles. That look, once you get a part of it, you get rid of it. And then what you're left with is the muscle, bro, get it? And so, you know, because of the glycogen loading, this the skin and the muscle, every gram of glycogen, three grams of water are drawn between the skin and the muscle. Fucking mosquitoes are biting again. I'll tell us what's going on. It's so fake, bro. Factor Anyways, fat loss. Okay, next question. Do you need to train to failure to stimulate hypertrophy? 90% of people said no, and the correct answer is no. You don't need to train into failure. You don't need to train at all to stimulate hypertrophy. You want to know why? Because I have a section in, in my old page, uh, Genetic, Genetic Beast. It shows you that it says that overeating protein in the time course, you can just overeat overeat protein and you'll stimulate hypertrophy. You'll get a hypertrophic effect because if you're in an anabolic growth state, meaning you're eating more than what is being broken down, these molecules, so you're creating more molecules than are being broken down. And as you're eating more, you're shutting down this catabolic hormone. You're converting it to an androgen. So it doesn't have to compete with the, myo the androgen receptor. Get it? It's not competing anymore because it has turned into an androgen because you're now in an anabolic growth state. See what I'm trying to explain to you? So you're expanding. But are you getting bigger? No, your, your, your femur is closed, so you'll be a manlet forever. You're never going to grow, bro. You understand me? You'll be a manlet forever. You're manlet. You, you is manlet, bro. You're to stimulate it's unfortunate. Now, some people who said yes might have been. This is strong. Hey, look at him. Wow, he's lifting that. Look at that. How much is that? Wow, it's power lifting. Fucking, I don't know, man. 50 pounds. Whoa, he's so super strong. You need to train to failure to maximize hypertrophy, which would be more open to... Why are the limbs weaker than the power lift? In lifting a heavy weight off the floor or doing particular like bench press and all that. Why are these always the weakest? Why are they so weak here doing these? Why can't they do Based, super heavy? No question that we can... Eh, some try to do really heavy. How strong is how strong is Jeff Nippert? You think Jeff Nippert's strong? He's not strong. Stimulate. He's weak, bro. He's weak because he's small and his muscles are fake, man. They're fake muscles, bro. Growth by training pretty far from failure. I personally do still think that both failure and non-failure training have their place, but no. Everything works. Let me explain something to you. Everything works, but only one particular thing, one certain thing that you're doing will work really, really, really well. That's the difference. Everything will work what you're doing. Jumping up and down, doing all these things, eating a lot, doing whatever. But a combination, if you're eating a lot, anabolic growth state, and you want to build new myofibulars, and you, and you want to get stronger, you have to do something very specific to do that, to do that, and they call that myofibular hypertrophy. That ain't this stuff, bro. You don't need to train to failure to build some muscle. Okay, is it possible to build well, muscle? Failure doesn't build, right? failure doesn't build muscle. What builds muscle is food. Food builds muscle. All these things that you're doing, they're stimulus. Their stimulus is to get something going. But it really is the food that is going to build you this hypertrophic effect. But this hypertrophy effect can only get so big. You know, it's myolecular domain size. You got this like loading and unload, gra gravity loading, unloading, of gravitational loading, unloading, you know, fiber hypertrophy. Then you got myofibular, getting more myofibular. And then you got sarcoplasmic. The cell's getting bigger with the way, boom. And all kinds of weird things going on out there, bro. And there's other kinds of things too. And information, da, 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 whatever. And over 87,000 people passed the test. I'm not here to educate right now. I'm just here to review. Pretty solid, because the test was pretty hard. I mean, only 158 people scored 100 percent, so just they about did, eh? one in every 1,000 people got a perfect score. So all these dumb minions are actually getting involved in this crap. 
And this is what the results curve looked like. So pretty much a perfectly normal distribution. With the I don't know. So this could be fake. Maybe he's making it up. He deficit. created this. I don't know. Of course, know. you will still lose fat. Due to train of time and the scientific well, movement, the caloric surplus becomes the most practical way to push that ceiling up, which then makes simultaneous fat. The harder it is caloric. for your body to build muscle at all, especially as you get close to your genetic ceiling. You're not building muscle. You're expanding the, the muscle that you already have. Why can't these fucking people tell it how it is? You are not building muscle. What you're building is this. Nothing. You're fucking expanding the original, your original domain size by overeating food. And you're moving some weight around, kind of stimulating it. But you don't even need to do that. You don't even need to do it. So science tells you you don't need to do that. You need to eat shitloads of protein and then shitloads of every other kind of food. Just eat shitloads. I guarantee you. Eat all fucking day, just massive amounts of food and just walk around and notice how big you are, how big you get. Now, are you going to say, well, I'm, I'm getting fat because I'm eating all this food? Well, <laughs> bro, if you're eating, if you're drinking Cokes all day and sugar and stuff and you're in, a, in an insulin resistant state, insulin resistance, of course you're going to get fat. Get it? The fat that you're eating will turn into fat. So sugar makes you insulin resistant it doesn't load in the muscle and sugar does load in the liver it's, there's a conversion but that's not how it works so you should be eating a lot that's why they say eat a lot of protein and you're gonna say well the carnivore diet but that doesn't work that way bro look i eat starch i would eat starch i would eat some starch not a lot and then i would eat shit loads of protein vegetables and fruits and shit and all this just really good natural food stay away from man-made food like pasta right pasta, um, pizza, pasta, ice cream, and dairy products, and whatever else, bro. Would you, you know what I mean? These kind of things. So be careful. But if you're a person that is prone to getting fat, and here's the thing. If you're not a person prone to getting fat, you most likely will not get fat. But you will increase this, increase the size of your muscles by overeating, being an animal grossing. It's just known fact because there was a guy online before. There was a video on it. A guy did it. They made a video, this guy made a video, and he talked about how he ate so much, and then he got so big, and he got so strong, and then he shrunk, and then he lost all that. And his friends asked him if he was on steroids and this and that, blah, 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 blah. He was in an anabolic growth state, he got really big, and his, 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 the weight went up because he got strong. He got some myofibular hypertrophy, myofibular, or sorry, not myofibular, he got some fiber hypertrophy, fiber hypertrophy. He expanded anabolic growth state, boom, and psh, he could push weight and do a bunch of stuff. But, and then he shrank. He lost it all. Me, I never lost it all, bro. I keep it all the time at a certain weight. I, I did keep all of it because I was partying a lot. And it was really hurting when it was going away. It hurt like a bitch, bro, when it was going away. Because I was atrophying at that time. But that was severe atrophy. Like, fucking, I don't know how to describe it. It was very painful. But And I realized, hey, I'm shrinking now. Because <laughs> I'm not doing anything. I'm not really eating enough. And my body wasn't compensating for this anymore. But I, I maintain this, these myofibulars and the scar tissue formation and everything by just simply eating properly all day long. That's people ask me, how do you, how do you, how do you, how, you're so fucking big, dude. Like how the, your fucking arms and this and that. How are you fucking maintaining this? You don't even work out. These OPCs ask me, you're not even working out, bro. You're, you know, I was this time when I moved away, when I lived in Mexico. And they're like, bro, you're just fucking massive, bro. You just fucking, you don't even work out. You're always hanging out here with us. How are you doing this? It's because I would just keep eating. I would eat protein and stuff and I would never be hungry. I'd make sure that I was never hungry so I wasn't in a catabolic state. I didn't want my body to dismantle this, these muscles and stuff, the cells. I didn't want it to dismantle it. So I kept it at a certain, I kept myself at a certain body weight and, I, and then I ate so much food. But with the time I got lazy with that. See, the drinking, the partying, not too much sex and not fucking eating all day. This is what happens. All right. So, at a certain point of advancement, the caloric surplus becomes the most practical way to push that ceiling up, which then makes simultaneous fat loss or re... Well, yeah, caloric surplus. If you're eating more, of course, you're going to be an anabolic growth state, creating more molecules. This is, this is, no, this is easy to, to understand. Feasible. Whereas for the other options here, recomp is much easier to achieve. And I've explained why in another video that I can link down. You want to recomp and try to get big, myofi big fibers. You want to increase the size of the fibers. And recomp at the same time, get skinny. That's no. Nah. Okay, which of the following? This is all fake. You could do it fakely with 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 steroids. Now he's going to bring out the BCAs, creatine myohydrate, creatine, all this to create the fake muscles. Which of the following supplements has the most scientific support for muscle and strength gain? Fake muscles, 
and then you get the fake strength. The, this myositic androgen receptor controls the strength, but not the mass of the limb muscles, and then the supporting of the, the fake muscle. <laughs> so you can misconstrue this the myositic androgen receptors for strength when your muscle is filled with fluid, because these are fluid muscles, see? These are fluidic. Look, I'm, I'm going to do this one more time just for the minions on his channel. So, okay, so um, just so we, we get this we get this straight. Yeah. All right, so. Oops, sorry, sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. And then we'll bring up, uh, I got that, uh, that, that, that. And uh, we're gonna bring up, which one should we bring up? I forgot now. Yeah, sarcoplasmic hypertrophy, I don't know the other one. I can't remember now. My mind is going because this is boring. He's boring me. Oh yeah, myositic androgen receptor. Is it Palmas? I don't like Palmas. I like this one. PubMed. All right. I like PubMed's version. Yeah. It's the same thing. All right. Okay, so now that we've got that PubMed. All right, so go back here. Go back to Goofball, goofball Face. I don't need this anymore. I'll go back. So BCA, creatine, monohydrate, creatine, CL, Okay, so what kind of strength is this? Why isn't this working again? This keeps shutting off. I think I'm losing power. What the fuck, man? Uh, it's dimming. Losing power. Okay, so BCA, creatine, monohydrate, creatine, blah, blah, blah. What is this? It, the scientific support, the muscle and the strength gain. The muscle is going to be fake because that creates fake muscles. So here's the muscles that it creates. Sarcoplasmic hypertrophy refers to an increase in the volume of sarcoplasmic fluid in the muscle cell with no actual increase in muscular strength. Think the pump. With sarcoplasmic hypertrophy, the muscles are adapting to last longer with less of a need for maximum strength and speed in briefer periods. So you're, you're all going to get this. You're going to get this hypertrophy, sarcoplasmic. It refers to an increase in the volume in sarcoplasmic fluid in the cell with no actual increase in muscular strength. So now you don't have any muscular strength, but you're going to get a force production strength. This one, and myositic androgen receptor controls the strength. See, maximum force production for maximum force production, bro. This creates maximum force production strength, but not the mass of the limb muscles. It doesn't control that. What controls that is hypertrophy. And here you go. And this, and, and because this shit all builds you muscle. It's all fake, like him. Fake steroids, muscle, sarcoplasmic, all this kind of fake stuff. Let's move on with that, bro. Following supplements has the most scientific support for muscle alone doesn't enhance muscle protein synthesis any more than consumption of complete high quality protein at six to fifteen reps. Yeah. They don't they don't they don't create protein synthesis. What they do is what the creatine and all this, it fills your muscles up with fake fluidic muscles. And the correct answer is six to fifteen reps. Now it is the most gives you artificial muscles. Six to fifteen is the most practical middle ground. However, including some sets. So now you're training to get more these other receptors. Slightly different. You can't see them. Okay, which muscle is not significantly activated by the exercise shown below? Anterior deltoid was the most common response, which is the correct answer. Does However, this really this matter? This question definitely tripped a lot of people up. Tens of thousands this. of people picked either the lats, traps, or biceps as non-active muscles here. So let's clear this up. The lats will Why definitely are they doing be highly this? active because you're extending the shoulder or bringing your arm down. You this are, is the yeah. case for pretty much any pulling exercise you do. Does this really matter if you're not doing traps, it? traps? In my channel, if you're not doing it, you're not going to get The traps nothing. actually fan out and run all the way down no, the mid back. No myofibular hypertrophy. Every time you're doing a row, your mid traps will be active because they squeeze the shoulder blades together. In fact, they do, do they? even if you modified the row to make it more lat dominant by really just driving your elbows down and trying not to squeeze your shoulder blades together, your traps would still be very active. This doesn't work with myofibular hypertrophy. What he's doing, he's too slow, and he's not he's not doing anything. He's very he's moving very slow and everything. He's he just simply he thinks he he thinks in his mind what uh, I thinks he thinks he knows he's doing something. He thinks he's building a muscle by moving this. It's it's building a muscle. It's building a muscle. 
and he's not building any muscle and he's on steroids so there you go and creatine and everything else even though the biceps won't be quite These, as the active the muscles are fake important eccentric phase on a bicep when you curl the weight up when you, you squeeze, squeeze, lower the weight back down means nothing but the correct answer garbage okay last question on the easy level what does Mechanical RPE tension. stand for most people said rating of perceived exertion and the correct answer is rating of perceived exertion who cares no. or RPE 10 here's where he's showing off now with the steroids zero reps in reserve RPE shows up with steroids had one rep in reserve and so on down the line. tries to look cool all right let's move on to the medium level Urgh. which Urgh. rest period length tends to be better for work, bro? this one was split pretty evenly down. he's never had a hard day's labor he's never been to a job hard day's labor or anything like that so busy lifting heavy weight all day i think people here in mexico they have time to fucking lift weights all day bro most people they lift weights is because they have nothing better to do that's why i don't go to a gym i'm busy i have things to do so if i do go there it's just to it's just to cause injuries to muscle fibers and then i allow my body to build it when i'm busy working and doing other stuff or whatever else i'm doing down the middle with 46 percent saying short systematic review by gergich and colleagues found that resting longer than 60 seconds was better than resting shorter than 60 seconds yeah who cares because you caused some you cause a disruption in the myositic androgen receptors when you're moving these weights around. They're getting disrupted, bro. There's a disruption there. This is, I don't know how to describe this, but there's a disruption in there. In the organization of the sarcomeres and things, there's a disruption. So you kind of get weakened because the androgens, they have to bind to this. That's why you kind of, at the moment you do this movement and then all of a sudden you feel kind of, it's a repetitive movement and then all of a sudden you try to do it again right away so quick you can't really you can't really do it and you're like hey, i'm weak i feel weak why can't i do it because you're weak bro because weights weaken you listen heavy weights lifting heavy weights weakens you it doesn't make you stronger what makes you stronger is myofibular hypertrophy more myofibulars they make you stronger but it's a feat to get them you don't you don't just get them going like this pushing away they don't build like that bro <laughs> so yeah that was likely the point. because the longer rest periods led to higher training volume. Okay, which of the following higher rest periods, higher training volume? Not really. Depends on what you're, how much you're lifting, and the disruption to the, the androgen myositic androgen receptor. He is wanting to move some kind of weird weight. I don't know what he's Would doing. Would not Fuck. count as a form of progressive overload. So progressive overload is when you gradually increase the amount of stress you're placing on a muscle over time. Yeah, it does. Walking with it. That's what it, walking with it, not lifting it and then dropping it on the floor. You think there's enough metabolic stress going on there? No, that's why these people, failure, bro. That's why powerlifting, they never get big. I saw a guy in my gym, he was fucking repetitively doing Olympic lifting and he saw me coming in once a week. I just fucking boom, boom. And I just got massive, bro. Especially when I did that video. Remember that last video in 2018, 19, I did that video and then I posed. I put on my channel, my posing thing on my old channel, Jedi Beast. Bro, that guy, when I came in the gym, bro, I just looked like open bodybuilder, bro. My back was massive, my feet. I just fucking, every week, I just got bigger and bigger. And he just started to turn around and look at me. And then I was just doing fucking 500-pound squats like there were nothing at the time, even though I have fucking plates in my foot. And I have some problems. You know, I told you about my stenosis, but yet I could still do 500-pound squats and a bunch of stuff and heavy lifts and moving around stuff and everything. And he just was like fucking at all, bro. He just was at all. He just fucking was defeated, bro. He just fucking gave up. Because of that, he fucking gave up and left. Then he, there's these other dicks that showed up. They have their little book and they would write down stuff. And then they say, yeah, I took some creatine and I, lost, I got some five pounds and then I lost it. And, then, and they just keep working out. But their workouts were garbage, bro. It was all garbage. No wonder why they're not getting anything. Just failure, bro, after failure. I watch people in the gym. They get failure after failure. And all they do is look at me and they all think I'm on steroids. Even now, I was in a Mexican gym, bro. I told you, I just uploaded some videos. And then one Mexican, these Mexican people, they asked me if I'm on steroids, bro. And I was like, bro, I haven't been to a gym in over three years. And they're like, what the fuck, bro? How the fuck do you look like that? And they couldn't believe me. They said, nah, man, you want steroids, bro. You want steroids, bro. Look at you. You just, you look fucking like massive big <laughs> like a bodybuilder walking around. I go, bro, I don't lift any weights, bro. Do you understand me? You can also get big just eating shit loads of protein. So, yeah, it's I, they, fucking people are so dumbfounded. They don't know what the fuck they're doing. They never eat enough to get this hypertrophy, what they're looking for, or doing certain things. They're just not doing it. Huh. The most common way to do this is by gradually adding volume. So they I think, adding they think that weight has a magic power to build a muscle, and it doesn't. That's why he's taking steroids, bro, because it doesn't work. Get it? It just never works, bro. You're skating uphill, gravitational loading and unloading all the time. Adding a rep 
constantly said, from workout to workout. Your body is constantly fighting with you to keep you small. That's why all these people want to get the the magic thing to shut off the full stat myostatin problem. You know, they want to shut it off so you can keep expanding forever. Bro, if you were to do that and you were to expand, you could fucking you would die. You understand me? You'll die. You'll fucking die. That's your body is regulated not to do any of these things to carry you through famine, to carry to do specific things. It gives you specific things, energy receptors for a reason. If you're in an adapted state, you cannot grow any more muscle. You're not supposed to. It, it could it could cause you to commit suicide and die, bro. If you just kept getting fucking bigger and bigger and it would have never stop. You understand me? It's that's the reason you can't. Because it's made not to, but you want to. But it's not made to do that. You understand me? Unless it was already the fiber count that you were born with at, at, at 15, this myonuclear domain size ended, and then you had a, a really high fiber count. And then those fibers can kind of size up. But even when they size up, they always shrink all the time. You know, when you go to sleep, they shrink. You're shrinking constantly, bro. That's why if you don't want to shrink constantly, just fucking eat like crazy. But again, you're going to commit suicide. <laughs> Can you imagine fucking eating all the fucking time all day? That's why I built more myofibulars. So I wouldn't have to do all of that. And I could stay like this big and fucking strong all the time, bro. Because I want to look like a bodybuilder without lifting. You understand me? And without eating tons of tons of food. I can literally, I maintain a, I can maintain a 250 pound body weight on like 2,000 calories, what you call calories, a day. See that? And there's no problem there. And... But if I were to go to a gym or exert myself, exert myself or doing something on 2,000 calories, my muscle would start to go. So I would have to increase it according to, adjust it to according to what, I, uh, what it is I am doing out there. That is the whole thing. Being a master of something is figuring out all these things, how they all work to understand what are all these myofibulars. I mean, what are these, all these hypertrophies? What are all these things? What are, what is really happening there? You have to understand it. It's not just, I got to read science and science has got all the solutions for me. Science does tell you a lot of things, but you only go back to science to reference that which you did, you discovered. That's how people discovered the Atlantic Ocean, bro. Get it? They discovered the new world. They went out there in their experience. They went on a boat and they didn't fall over the edge of the world. They found out it was round. So you just haven't found out that this plant that that it isn't that bodybuilding isn't isn't uh, isn't round. It's you still think it's flat. Fuck, man. So I'm just looking at the options here. Option Garbage. Percent of people. It's time to get your glutes more well, Waste of time. Muscle soreness is a very inner to early and muscle soreness muscle? shouldn't happen when training with good form. That's not true either. Muscle, muscle soreness? soreness is normal, especially what soreness? when you're doing something new, regardless of whether the technique or something is good or bad. So, A is the correct answer especially here. Yeah, I was happy to see dumbs. that 78% of people got that one right. All mm -hmm. right, Noel is a late beginner to early intermediate glutes. To maximize games a week would be more. Our range is most pro to three reps in reserve. Muscles is least active much throughout the range of motion. That's close to failure. It's the best answer, especially given the recovery clause. as a practical range for most people. And, or seeking body recovery. Brace against your leg with your non-work. Correct answer is shoulder abduction. So, remember it anyway. All right, let's move on to the hard level. Okay, your oral studies show that people can move way faster with a belt than without one. See, you significantly Who decrease. Who the fuck wants to lift a heavy weight, bro? Most people never want to lift a heavy weight. That is the purpose of myofibular hypertrophy. I just wanted to get super strong, and I am still able to lift that heavy weight. Get it? But I don't want to. I don't care. Just as long as I can still do it, because I have more myofibulars, I'm able to do this, because I have more androgen receptors are attaching to these myofibulars. You ran out. Get it? You run out at some point. The myofibular only gets so big, and then these receptors, they only widen so much, and then at some point, that ends. Your lift ends. And then what do you do? You take steroids. More <laughs> molecules now on a weaker structure to try to lift it and then you're getting all these injuries and whatever the fuck you're doing out there on steroids bro you all people are crazy insane crazy this channel is insane this guy's insane crazy steroids this that all you people are insanely crazy do you understand me out there all these fitness gurus and everybody they have you all over the sure. place that is true Basically, garbage he's trying to impress you with this air he doesn't impress me bro he doesn't impress me so the there are people that will lift something heavy on their channel doing something very specific it can be impressive 
but he doesn't impress this doesn't impress me because I know a lot of people can do it and he took a steroid bro now a person who didn't take a steroid and actually lift it I seen a guy do it with one of our red shocks and that was impressive but this this manlet doesn't impress me Jeff Nemper you understand me it's very specific when people are doing certain things certain things I'm watching them I'm not so impressed by what they're doing but I understand what they're trying to get they're, they're, they're still discovering it. They're young, bro. They just haven't got there yet. Eventually, they will discover it, but then by then, it's already too late. See what I'm trying to explain to you? That's why you have to look for people that already had the experience, and they can pass it on to you so you don't have to waste all your years away, all your time, chasing your tail. Answer is C, and it looks like 43% of you. All of these people are losers right, on this channel. All right, let's standards question here. They're so losers, Michael bro. Michael 80 kilos, or 170. So he has average genetics for strength. Is dedicated to the gym. Average genetics for strength? He, he, to him, strength is just lifting a heavy weight. But his body is small, so how the fuck could he be strong? He's a man lit, bro. He never built any fucking... He didn't build any size on his body. He's small. And even that steroid look that he has, the little puffy look, he's still small, bro. How much should he realistically be able to bench press for a one rep max? And for choices, we've got... Eight. Easy. Take some, take some molecules and you'll be able to bench press as much as you want. The more you take, the more you bench. They'll bind to the uh, the androgen receptor. Basically for five years, you should be in the intermediate to advanced beginner, intermediate to advanced. The strength standards for he's got it video. all worked out for you, like like as if this is like he's a god. I got it all worked out for you. Here's the here's the plan. He's not God. Mother Nature and this planet, this universe is fucking. If you want to call that God, is God, bro. Get it? It had already made it for you in there, and it, it doesn't say new beginner, intermediate, anything like that. There's no such things as gym. There's no such things as fitness. These are man-made things. This is, he created this. It's man-made, so it's fake. Anything that man creates is fake. Anything that is real is out there in the, in the biological world, real world. That's how it works. People farm. They do these, un these unaccustomed exercise movements, and then they get some of these myofibulars and damage, some hypertrophy. They eat a lot. They eat potatoes. They eat all day. They work so hard. They do very specific things. They get some stimulation. They get many different hypertrophies. They get a lot of myofibular. They may get some sarcoplasmic. They may get some loading, unloading. They get a lot of stuff because they're busy on farms. They, they get what they call unfamiliar forms. They do unfamiliar forms of eccentric, concentric movements. Do oh, you understand me? And that's what is creating all these different types of hypertrophy. They all come together. But in the end, they get a lot of myofibulars. They get massive, bro, because of these unfamiliar forms that they're doing all the time on farms. That's why you, they, people knew a long time ago, hundreds of years ago, Italy, they knew to hire always farmers to fight for them as soldiers. They never wanted fucking city people because they're weak motherfuckers. They never go through hardships. You could call this going through hardships, bro, building your body by doing manual labor, bro, on farms. It's, it's, go there. Jinping is massive. Look at Jinping, the Chinese guy. They put him on a farm when he was young. They saw him as a skinny, weak guy. That's what they said. They built him on a farm. He got built. Then he went into the military. And after the military, he did some engineering. And look at him. He's the president of China. Does he look like a small dude to you? No, bro. Now, you could say Donald Trump is a big dude. Now, he's tall. He's big. He's definitely a big person. Now, more size that he has on his body. It, could it be TRT replacement, testosterone replacement from his doctor? Possibility. He's got all this energy and everything. It's America, bro. He can afford to take steroids, too. So he may be taking a steroid, but at low dosages and whatever, and it's monetized, monetized turned by a doctor and how they're doing this and whatever so yeah it's a very big possibility i have a feeling he's doing that it should put you between a 1.5 to 2 times and body there's nothing wrong pressing. with that if they want to do it that's their business which would be 120 kilos or 265 pounds to 160 kilos or about whatever bench and for the example lift are given most he's, appropriate he's, for he thinks exercise. that this is so important to lift something heavy is so important People in factories don't want to lift anything heavy. People who do heavy jobs, construction, they always run away from lifting heavy shit all the time. They don't want to lift anything heavy. And they don't even go to gyms, bro. Get it? Because their their body's getting built doing this anyway, whatever they're doing. These unfamiliar forms on the construction site and all this. And not really fucking labor jobs, bro, and everything. Labor jobs and everything. They fucking hate lifting heavy shit. Nobody wants to. Only these crazy people online 
they want to promote you to lift a heavy weight. They want to brainwash you into lifting a heavy weight. So then you get fucking injured, then you never come back. From a hypertrophy standpoint, well, 42% of you say garbage while lifting your chest up. More and impression, more impression. Muscles. I'm not impressed. I don't care if you can lift a heavy weight. Soleus muscle. What impresses cap. me is if you could really get strong by building more myofibulars, that would impress me. You understand me? That impressed people when they saw me in my old gym going to valleys and shit. It impressed them that, fuck, this guy could work out one day a week. He buffeted and then he fucking got massive and he can push heavy weight as well. Just get massively fucking strong, punch through fucking walls and everything else, bro. That's what impressed them. That's what impressed me when I discovered myofibular hypertrophy and I, and I met and then I... I taught other people and it impressed them and then they looked impressive and then they passed it on get it and so that is what you want to do that's what impress impresses people is how you got that that you have a ferrari you built this fucking beautiful house and all this it's impressive how these people they got all these things how did they get all these things it's impressive like you see a guy like fucking um what's his name Anyway, some rich dude out there, whatever. It's impressive how they got there, bro. How they built all this. It's impressive. You know, and they leave a lasting impression on you. When you really speak to real people, not the fake people. Dan Locke and all that bullshit garbage online. Buy my fucking program. Get rich. No, it's not. It's not impressive, bro. Get it? So the soleus muscle is one of the two muscles that make up the triceps surrey. Soleus is actually very... This is all garbage. Machine studies showed that cold water immersion lowered myofibrillar muscle protein synthesis... Cold water, post-exercise cooling impairs muscle protein synthesis rates in recreational athletes. It, who cares? So this, you're atrophying and shrinking, shrinking, my, uh, fucking loading and unloading, bro. Get it? See that? It's just more garbage. Who gives a shit about protein synthesis? You're not this building more myofibulars. The same year showed that cold water immersion led to significantly yeah. blunted muscle hypertrophy. Anabolic signaling, cold water. Well, what if I eat a shitload of fucking, what if I eat a buffet for five, six hours? Am I going to get an anabolic signaling? I'm getting anabolic signaling even if I did get some cold water. Skeletal muscle fiber, fiber, here it is. Fiber hypertrophy. I don't do fiber hypertrophy. I do fucking myofibular hypertrophy. Look, I'd probably type it up in here. I don't even know what it would say in Google if I type that. Google. Mama Google, what is fiber hypertrophy? Fiber Fiber hypertrophy. Muscle fiber hypertrophy, hyperplasia and capillary density. And I don't want to know hyper I already know that. Muscle fiber hypertrophy in response to six weeks of whatever. Yeah, but what is it though? Why doesn't it show a description like it usually does? What is fiber hypertrophy? What is it? According to this definition, hypertrophy of skeletal muscle is an increase in the size of fibers without an increase in their number respectively of any increase in the number of nuclei per fiber so there's res irrespectively of any increase in the number of nuclei that's what you all are doing this hypertrophy that you are all doing is is fiber hypertrophy and me i don't do that i do this i do i do hold on a second i do i do one second. Let me bring it up. I don't have it here. See the see the see the differences. I do. I do myofibular hypertrophy. I do myofibular hyper hypertrophy. Refers to the when the numbers of myofibulars increases. This causes muscles to increase in the strength and density. The muscles also contain sarcoplasmic fluid. This fluid is an energy source that surrounds the myofibulars and the muscles. Okay. So we got two in one, bro. That's amazing. We get sarcoplasmic fluid and myofibulars. We get an increase in numbers. However, you all are doing, you all are doing fiber hypertrophy. Call it to, according to the definition of what is fiber hypertrophy. Hypertrophy of skeletal muscle is an increase in the size of fibers. It's an increase in the size of the fiber, the, the fiber that you already have. You're not getting more fiber count. It's an increase in it without an increase in the number irrespectively of any increase in the number of nuclei per fiber. But the problem is full of stat myostatin, gravitational loading and unloading, bro. Get it? This atrophying effect constantly. You're trying to skate uphill. You're trying to get those fibers to get bigger 
But how do they get bigger? I told you, sarcoplasmic fluid gets them bigger, makes the cell get bigger with fluid in it. So what? But what is this? What is? What are they exactly talking about? How is, did they tell you what is getting this fiber bigger through hypertrophy? And how do you get it? See, what is a fiber? What is fiber hypertrophy? It refers to an increase in the size of the cell, while it it it's it, it an increase in the in the size of the cell, while hyperplasia refers to an increase in the number of cells or fibers. A single muscle cell is usually called a fiber that their primary adaptation, the muscles get bigger. So there you go. So when the number of myofibrillars increases, myofibrillar hypertrophy. They even told it to you in this one, bro. They told it to you right there, bro. Hyperplasia, which is myofibrillar hypertrophy. It's based on that. All right. What causes muscle fiber hypertrophy? What causes it? See what they say. Skeletal muscle hypertrophy is the increase in muscle fiber cross-sectional area that is accompanied by an increase in the muscle volume and mass. The muscle volume and mass. Hypertrophy occurs in response to a higher load on muscle which activates inducible agents such as IGF-1. But no more, but no nuclei, no nuclei. No cells, no muscle cells, no nuclei, no nothing, bro. No cells. What is considered hypertrophy? Hypertrophy is an increase in the size of in the size of cells or tissues in response to various stimuli. In response to various stimuli, which stimuli are you using to cause this speci a specific type of hypertrophic effect? A typical example is muscular hypertrophy. In response to exercise, exercise stimulates skeletal and cardiac muscle fibers to increase in diameter and to accumulate more structural contractile proteins. Yeah, contractile proteins meaning sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. Sarcoplasmic hypertrophy gives you more structural contractile proteins. These contractile proteins, but it ain't myofibular hypertrophy. That's different types of proteins too. Some of the descriptions are obscure here, but whatever. What muscle fibers are used for hypertrophy? What are used for hypertrophy? Type 2 muscle fibers can be developed through strength training. Resistance training increases the size of both type 1 and type 2 muscle fibers. But we don't want to increase them. We want to get more of them. Greater growth. Okay, greater, okay, uh, type 2 muscle fibers, greater growth, i.e. hypertrophy occurs in type 2 muscle fibers and increases actin miles myosin filaments this results in an increased ability to generate to to generate force it does it helps you to generate force <laughs> i get it but not, sarco not sarcoplasmic and yeah so you get some force but not very much and the fiber can only get so big it only gets so big bro it just doesn't keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger forever you stimulate some hypertrophy this fiber hypertrophy but it can only get so big that's the problem with this fucking shit so now you know what these all are, whatever. I brought them up in the sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. Fluid in the muscle cell, no, actually a muscle, muscle strength. So yeah, I mentioned this before, and this strength and whatever controls the mass, the limbs, both. So yeah, let's see what else he has to say. I gotta go, bro, this is boring. Across a seven week training study. So if your goal is to maximize muscle gain, cold baths are probably what not the this? best idea. That looks As ridiculous. for the other choices, they were just red herrings. Was that joke? actually some Rogan? research showing that stretching in between Oh, sets fuck. could be beneficial for growth. I did Stretch, a whole other video on that. Stretching down below and can help can can be beneficial for growth. Well, if you're eating a lot of protein, you can kind of stretch and then eat a lot of protein, and maybe you'll get some you'll get some hypertrophy. You'll you'll definitely get hypertrophy definitely from eating. Now I don't know about the stretching part. Maybe you're just trying to get it so it can cling to it or do something to it. I don't know. Stimulate some protein synthesis. Who the fuck knows, bro? It ain't gonna get much bigger. Trust yeah. me. But food will make you bigger because people who eat a lot, they get bigger. I'm not surprised that most people selected a high sugar meal because sugar seems to take the hit for pretty much everything negative these days. But there's no research I'm aware of suggesting it does anything good or bad for muscle protein synthesis. All right. Well, yeah, because you're 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 not a fucking you're depends on if you're endomorph, ectomorph or mesomorph, bro. What type are you? Get it? It'll affect you. Insulin resistance affects more of these other people that are prone to getting big and fat. They just have a genetic disposition so they get like that All right, rachel is an advanced level lifter who's been training for both strength and size for almost 10 i know years. her channel amrap said 
So as many reps as possible. I believe she was using at some point too to create some fake muscle. She goes, I'm doing bodybuilding. And then what she do? Take some creatine or something, created some fake stuff, and then it went away. She looks so like plain, bro. I don't know. She faked it too. She's cool. a faker. Roughly how many reps would you expect her to hit with 80% of her daily one rep max? I don't know. Who gives a 43%. shit? Ask her how many boxes she lives in a factory every day, You're working eight-hour shifts a day. Like, uh, Tell her to write it down in a book, how many boxes she lived and how many fucking bottles she moved around and skits and shit and all that and whatever else she was doing over there, moving buckets and shit and whatever at the factory. I think she's going to write it down all day try to find out. Does she take a rest day too after that? Does she take a rest day and then continue on doing this eight hour shift, bro? Fucking I don't know. Seven to ten reps, you know, four, because it wasn't an AMRAP, trees, you know, goal, or just making a little extra effort to move around a bit more as you, you can, get deeper. You can shoot the ball. All right, what type of periodization is shown in the table below? Periodization? This one definitely tripped a lot of people up. The most common response was block periodization. Undulating the correct periodization. answer is actually daily undulating periodization. Periodization. Block periodization. So DUP, Law periodization. So DUP is when the rep range varies or undulates. So it undulates, so because because you're you're constantly hypering and atrophying. This fiber hypertrophy is hypering and atrophying, hypering and atrophying, hypering and atrophying, hypering and atrophying. I'm not getting anywhere. I'm not getting anywhere fast. I'm not getting anywhere. I'm getting there and I'm not getting there. I'm getting there and getting there and getting there and getting there. Oh, I'm not getting there again. Shit, because I went on a holiday, on vacation, I didn't eat, I party, drank alcohol. Then go back to the gym again, try to hyper up again. Got to keep hypering and hypering and activating, hypering and atrophying, atrophying. A what a waste of time, bro. You can see that here in week one. And then some people just, they just don't get there at all whatsoever. This is just fucking all mind shit. It can't be block periodization because each block typically lacks and the reps would <laughs> decrease by it continuously and another group you junk. But we should instead think of them as a strategy Skinny, to gay bodies. prevent muscle. Now they're all into creating these muscularly gay bodies. These, these like muscular gay bodies because they can't achieve their goals. So... It's better to get a muscularly gayish kind of boyish gayish kind of body. That's the whole point. Potentially prevent muscle loss See? and improve diet. Get skinny and gayish, like uh, these kids in the street. Adherence. All right, last question. Which of the following would cause muscle protein synthesis to be elevated for the longest period of time? Well, I was happy to see that 72% of people have said one hour of weight training, which was the correct answer. Really? How how long has it increased when, when factory workers wait, work eight-hour shifts every single day and they take a rest day on Sunday? And they, some, some of them work six days a week and only rest day on Sunday. How much protein synthesis are they getting, bro? How much how much are they getting? Eh? This is one hour of lifting because you're lazy, an office worker. You're not doing anything. Sir, this, this is such a job. Who cares? Weight training up to a certain point. And More that's a wrap for the muscle IQ test. If you guys want to send it to this guy's faker than last time. He's puffy, bro. Sarcoplasmic. I can tell right away. He's on some shit, bro. And it's all fake, whatever. I'll see you in the next video. Tell me what you think about that. Jeff Nippard, man. The IQ test. His fucking IQ is smaller than anybody's out there. Well, actually, no. He's pretty smart in scamming the rest of all of you. He's smarter than me at scamming people with his fake fitness shit. So, yeah. I'm, I guess um, he passed the IQ test in, in uh, that department, scamming all of you people. <laughs> I told you that before, man. I'll see you in the next one. Ciao. Fucking the average of all fitness. Garbage, bro. Who the fuck watches this shit? Just chunk fucking TV, man. I got to go. I got to do some stuff, and then I'm going to try to upload this video really quickly because I got to go, man. I got I to go to another place. I'm traveling all the time. See you in the next one. Ciao, man.